Shabbat Shalom. Every good story has a great beginning, except for mine. My story doesn't have a great beginning, but my has a wonderful ending. Let me introduce myself. I am Peter Barjona, or some of you may know, Peter, son of John, formerly known as Simon Peter. Now, I want to tell you about my time with Jesus, but I have to be very cautious because I could ramble on. So I'm not going to take the time to tell you of all the demons that he's cast out or all the people that he miraculously healed or the many wonderful miracles he did. So I want to focus my time today on my relationship with a Jesus who never, ever stopped calling me. It began like this for me. My brother Andrew who didn't join in my family business of being a fisherman, had spent time with John the Baptizer. Now, my brother Andrew was one of his disciples. John was a rabbi. He was teaching. He was preaching. And he was baptizing people. And one day, when Andrew and John were with John the Baptizer, John stopped. And he pointed Jesus out of the crowd. And he said, Behold... The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Well, Andrew and John, they approached Jesus. And they kind of tagged along behind him for a while. And when, he caught, when they caught his attention, he turned around. They said, what do you want? Andrew said, well, um, where are you staying? And Jesus said, come with me and find out. It was about the 10th hour that day. And so they went and they spent the day with Jesus. But my brother Andrew younger, impulsive, not mature and well-mannered like myself, he came to me and he was all excited. And he said, Simon, we have found the Messiah. I thought, could it be? After hundreds and hundreds of years of our people waiting for a redeemer, waiting for someone to liberate, could he finally be here? And Andrew took me to Jesus. And Jesus looked at me and he said, you are Simon, but from now on, you will be known as Peter. And I thought, well, that's pretty good. Peter, that means rock in our culture, firm, strong. Well, later on I was to find out that rock doesn't just mean firm and strong. It could also mean something else. A lot of people think that when Andrew started following Jesus, I did as well. But there were several months in between the time that Jesus called me Peter and I began to follow him. There was a time where he came into our village and my mother-in-law, she was sick. She was in bed with a fever. He came into our home. He healed her. He raised her from her illness. I still didn't have a lot of time for Jesus. I had a fishing business to take care of after all. Let me tell you about my fishing business in Jesus. One day when Jesus was in our village, we were on the shores. Me and my men, we had parked our boats up along the shoreline and we were cleaning our nets out. We had fished all night long and had caught a single fish. And as we were on the shore, mending and cleaning our nets, Crowds were gathering around this Jesus. And he was wanting to teach them, but the people were pressing in so closely, he couldn't be heard. He couldn't express himself. And without asking, he got into my boat. He said, push out from the shore a little bit. I'd like to teach these people. So I got in the boat, and we pushed off. And then Jesus sat down. And he began to teach the people. When Jesus was finished teaching, he looked at me. He said, go out into deeper water and drop your net down for a catch. What you may not know is we don't fish in deep waters. Number one, we don't swim very well. Number two, everybody that knows anything knows the fish are up along the shoreline. So I said, well, master, if you say so. So I pushed out into deeper water. I dropped 
drop down my nets. And I tried to pull them up and I couldn't. I thought maybe I'm stagnant. But as I began to pull a little closer, I could see there were so many fish in the net. I had to call to my partners on the shore, come out in your boat, help me out. And as we began to pull the nets in, our boats began to sink. Began to pull the nets up, and there were so many fish, yet the nets didn't break. I let go of my part of the net, and I threw myself down in the boat. I was so aware of the sinfulness within me. My sins were clinging to me like the stench of fish on our nets. And I looked at Jesus, and I looked away. I couldn't even make eye contact with him. I said, depart from me. I am such a sinful man. And he reached out, and he put his hand on my shoulder. He said, don't be afraid. From now on, You'll be catching men. We drove our boats along the shoreline, and I walked away from everything. I left the nets, I left the boats, I left my business, and I began to follow Jesus. I became one of his disciples. He calls me out after all my life of being passed by, of never having a rabbi want me to follow him. I finally had a chance to follow the one who could be the Messiah. And one day when it became really clear that Jesus must be the Messiah, he did the most unusual and backwards thing I could ever think of. What happened was, we were gathered around that same lake. And it was springtime, the grass was green. And we had about 5,000 men besides their wives and children. And we gathered together. We were there several days. And everyone was getting hungry. And it was time to send them on. And, and Jesus says, you guys, you need to feed these people. And Philip said, well, a year's salary wouldn't pay these people. My brother Andrew says, we've got a young boy here. He's got some barley loaves. He's got some fish. And Jesus fed the people with that. Now, we've got a guy here who can heal people. We've got a guy here who can feed people. We've got a guy here who could be not just Messiah, but much more than that. And all the people said, let's make him king. We said, yes, let's make him king. And Jesus said, no, let me take care of this. You, 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 all of us, get in the boat and go. And so he began to disperse the crowd. We began rowing across, and sun was, was setting. It was getting dark, and the winds started to pick up. We couldn't use our sail. We were rowing strong, strong against the wind. And then, in the darkest part of the night, an hour or two before dawn, we were exhausted. We were rowing hard. We were tired, and the waves were lapping up against the side of the boat. When all of a sudden, We all looked. Someone said, it's a ghost. It's got to be a ghost. And everybody, we were already afraid of the wind and the waves. And then we thought it was a ghost. But it wasn't. It was Jesus. And he acted like he was going to walk right past us. Jesus, as he came close to the boat, said, don't be afraid. It's only me. And I said, Lord, if that's you, command me to come out on the water. And so he said, come on out here. And so I stepped out. And I began to walk. And believe it or not, I walked right up to Jesus. And it was like nothing I had ever walked on in my life. I'd always been on sand and pebbles and gravel. This was as smooth as skin. And I began to walk. And as I got closer to Jesus, all of a sudden I heard the waves slapping against the boat. And I looked. And I saw the wind and the waves. And I got so afraid began to sink. And as that water went up my nose and into my throat, and I coughed and I became more fearful. I cried out, Lord, help me, save me! And he reached down. He offered me his hand. He said, oh, you of little faith, why did you have 
he helped me up. We got into the boat. The men in the boat, all me included, worshipped him and said, surely this is the son. That night was dark, let me tell you. That night was fearful, but that was not the darkest, most terrifying night of my life. I want to tell you about the night that I'm least proud of. That was the darkest night of my life. Oh my. We just had a wonderful evening of celebrating the Passover together. We had gone out to the Mount of Olives. We began to sing songs. We went to the Garden of the, of the Oil Press, the Garden of Gethsemane. And we gathered around, and I was kind of full, kind of tired, kind of felt like a little nap. Have you ever felt that way after you eat? Jesus shook me a couple of times. Can't, can't you stay awake with me? Can't you pray with me one hour? And the next thing I know, the next thing I know, there are a ton of people with swords and clubs and torches. And we all took off as Jesus was arrested. But that's... That's not the part I want to get to. John, who I always think is Jesus' favorite, he and I walked into town together. Now John was friends with the high priest. And as we got into the courtyard, John waited outside the door. He said, wait here one minute. And he went in and he talked to the people in the courtyard where Jesus was. We could see him clearly. John made arrangements for me to be brought in. I don't know where John went, but I know where I went. There was a charcoal fire. It was cold that night. So I went over by the fire to warm myself up. I could hear them mocking Jesus. And this girl comes up to me, the servant girl, and she says, hey, I know you. You're with him. And I said, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just minding my own business, staying warm. Then another guy came up. He said, you are a Galilean. Your accent gives you away. You're one of his. No, I, I don't know who he is. Stood by the fire, just trying to blend in with the crowd. My heart was racing. I was terrified, and I couldn't understand why Jesus just stood there, shackled like a criminal. And the third person came said, yes, you're one of his. And I said, no, I don't know the man. And immediately I heard a rooster crow. I looked across the courtyard and I saw Jesus stare me right in the eye. And I ran out. I cried. I wept like a baby. I called down curses on myself. Curses on the day that I was born. Remember, this is a story of a Jesus who never, ever stops calling me. Well, those same shores where I first was introduced to Jesus, those same shores where I first heard my calling, those same shores of the water where I had nearly drowned and had nearly walked down water, is where I got to meet Jesus after his crucifixion, after his burial. It was actually the third time that I would see Jesus. But I didn't know that it was him at first. You see, Jesus had died. We were confused. We saw him. We touched the nail scars. We touched the side. But he was hit or miss. He was come and go. And so I went back to what I knew best, which was fishing. So I called Nathaniel up. I called James and John. Hey, guys. My brother Andrew. Come on. A couple other guys. I'm going to go fishing. And you know what they all said? We'll go fishing too. So we went out fishing. Because that's all I know. And we went out and we caught nothing. Nothing at all. And all of a sudden, there was someone on the beach with a charcoal fire knife. And he says, hey, put your nets on the other side dropped our nets down in there. And all of a sudden, we began to pull up so many fish. In fact, when we got onto the shoreline, I counted them out myself. 153 fish. Didn't even break the net. We knew it was Jesus. I swam ahead of everybody. John, actually, he kind of clued me in. Hey, it's the 
Lord. I left them in the boat, swam on ahead. Jesus had a fire laid out. I could smell the charcoal burning. He had some fish out there. He said, children, come. Bring some of the fish that you have caught. Nobody said, hey, is that you? We all knew it was him. And so he said, come and have some breakfast. And so we ate. Then Jesus tapped me on the shoulder. He said, come on, let's take a walk. We need to talk. He didn't call me Peter. Being a rock, not just a firm foundation, but I pretty much proved that swim like a rock. He said, Simon, do you love me? I said, yes, Lord. You know I he said, feed my sheep. We walked a little further. Simon, do you love me? I said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Simon, tend my sheep. We walked a little further. He said, Simon, do you love me? And it was the third time in all. It just pained me to the heart. I said, Lord, you know all things. You know I love you. Simon, feed my sheep. He said, Simon, there's going to come a day. You're going to be older. You're not going to dress yourself. You're not going to come and go where you want to go. But someone is going to lead you where you don't want to go. And they're going to do things to you that you don't want done to you. Now, I'm not the sharpest guy in the group. I'm not the smartest or the brightest. But I knew what he was talking about. He was letting me know I was going to die a similar death to his. I looked over at John, his favorite, and I said, what about him? Jesus says, you know what? If I want him to stay here until I return, that's none of your business. But I'm calling you. I'm calling you to follow In all my time with Jesus, all my time with Jesus, I learned this much. He never stops calling. No matter what, He never stops loving. And I learned one thing, but I almost walked down water. Never take your eyes off of Jesus.